Oh, how rude of me. I haven't given you enough time to freak out yet. You may do so now. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! There. It is 6 a.m. and we're just waking up and getting ready for Howler Fest. Yep. <laughs> So uh, let the beautification process begin. So I'm putting on my wig for my Ragnar cosplay. Only time I'll ever have a six pack. Ragnar is an obsidian and obsidians have white hair. So I'm going with it. I'm going with it right now. <laughs> but wigs are a pain in the butt. And I'm probably going to regret this regret wearing this later today but you know anything for the costume right <laughs> so we just got here that just parked sketchy noise. <laughs> in the awesome elevator what up thanks ready oh, to go okay, this is I'm ready to go LA elevator Six years of work? Five and a half years of work? Six, five, something like that, yeah. 
um, which Again, all you guys right? are a part of by, by continuing to support these books. And that's one of the first questions that I always want to ask you is that, you know, you wrote this incredibly successful trilogy. You have an opportunity to write anything that you want. Why choose to continue with Iron Gold? <laughs> right into it. <laughs> Dear God, why? Yeah. Um, I think that what's what's interesting when you're a writer, and I'm sure some of you guys here are writers, and if it's not your readers and you have personal experience with a book, you know, and, and when you read it, it connects with you a certain way, depending on the time of life that you are in in your life. Um, so when I read Star, when I watched Star Wars when I was young, it meant something very specific to me. And now when I watch it as an uh, older human being, I look back at it as nostalgia. I look back at it as you know this kind of myth that informs everything around me. And so when I was writing Red Rising, I was at a point in my life, I was 22, I was living with my parents in Seattle, and I was running back and forth between a lot of jobs that I didn't enjoy. I was kind of aimless, kind of lost, and I was, you know, I worked in politics for a little bit, I worked in a startup tech company, I just did all these jobs that were not what really sang my soul. And I created Red Rising because it was what I wanted to be. Yeah, I wanted to have a purpose. I wanted to have that binary thing that you find in stories where good and evil and something to overcome. And so I created Dara. Which character that you found to be a particular struggle to write, or which character ended up surprising? God, I just want to kill plenty, man. <laughs> <laughs> plenty was hard because I, I just wanted to like I, I killed him off like 200 pages earlier than I should have, um, and, and then I was like, no, we can't do that. We got to just have this guy around because he's that annoying. Like I wanted him to annoy someone, then someone just kills him. Like ha, catharsis. And then I realized, no, 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 but your writer waits. <laughs> He's not the best looking author. <laughs> so what was the end of it? Uh, did you, I don't know uh, if I wanted to repeat it. Did you decide to become a novelist to win such accolades, or was uh, it just one of the perks? I, 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 you know, I was raised on Tiger Beat. And, uh, <laughs> I just desperately wanted that Nick Cannon foppish. Uh, not Nick Cannon, uh, what, was the, what was the name? Uh, Nick, uh, Nick Carter. Nick Carter. Nick Carter. Carter, yeah, I just desperately wanted that, that, that Nick Carter spread with the gold chain and just like that. Uh, yeah. So Tiger Beat, if you're out there, I'm here. <laughs> you're right under Nathaniel Hawthorne. <laughs> I mean, he was a good looking dude. Bullshit! <laughs> Ernest Hemingway, we got Ripper, we got uh, Langston Hughes. Wait, they have a ranking system for this? Yeah, you're like seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm literally just checking my own Twitter. I'm not even... <laughs>